Welcome back to the secrets of writing a research paper. I'm Mr. Ewing, and these are some of my favorite basketball players. I love to watch these guys play, but I don't think any of them were the greatest of all time. In this lesson, I'll use the GOAT to show you how to find an article. Feel free to pause, rewind, or rewatch this video as needed. As always, you can go at your own pace. Now, most teachers will tell you that databases are much greater resources than Google. Google can sometimes, in fact, oftentimes, get you into a lot of trouble when you're doing research. It's a really useful tool, I think, to look up information that you're looking for just in everyday life. But when you're doing research, you've got to be really careful. That's why, as I'll show you today, databases are the way to go. In fact, you may have a teacher that requires you to only use databases. You may have a teacher that will not allow you to use articles or other websites found via Google. So be careful. Now, the first method I'll show you using a database is something called a discovery search engine. At my school, my students will log on to their accounts, get access to a portal page, and then they can get access to the library. Now, when they get there, you can click EBSCO Discovery, Discovery, and then you can just type in information, or your search terms, rather. Uh, here, I've typed in Michael Jordan. Now, look what I get here. I get over 700,000 results. Where am I supposed to start? Well, in a lot of databases, maybe in the one that your school provides, a research starter pops up for a lot of topics. In this case, I have one for Michael Jordan. So I click on the link to the research starter. And again, you may need to enter a username or password to access uh, this document. Ask your teacher or librarian. They should be able to provide you with that information. So I open up the research starter and I just skim through it. It's a research starter is usually typically pretty short. Um, you may have to click on a link on the left hand side like HTML full text or something similar to that to actually see the article. But once you read through it, skim through it, you can get some ideas about who this person was or if you just have a regular topic, what your topic is about. Um, and what you might be interested in researching related to that topic. So this is where you want to brainstorm additional search terms. You know, when I searched just Michael Jordan, we got over 700,000 hits. Uh, that's going to be really difficult to sift through. So I may be able to search Michael Jordan and basketball or Michael Jordan and perseverance because I, from the research starter, know that he was cut from his high school basketball team, but still became the greatest of all time. Um, you might search Michael Jordan owner because he is one of the first African-American owners in the NBA. Uh, you might search other things like Michael Jordan and donations or Michael Jordan and activism because my particular prompt is asking me, why is Michael Jordan a great American, not just a great athlete, but a great American. So armed with all of these search terms, I'm going to go back to the database and hit advanced search under the search bar. New lines to type in search terms will pop up and I'm going to start to write donations. And when I start to write that, the database actually suggests some search terms. I highly suggest that you click on one of the suggestions. The database is pretty smart and it knows what it's doing here. So I'm going to click on donations or charitable giving uh, or donating or charity to see if I can get information or articles about Michael Jordan and this 
particular topic. I'm also, next to Michael Jordan, going to hit the drop-down menu. And rather than just a, a regular all-text search, I'm going to hit subject terms so that I know the articles I'm getting are actually about Michael Jordan. He is the subject of the article. All right. Now that I've done that, I can hit enter and I can narrow down my search results even further using the limiters along the left hand side of the screen. Again, like when we found ebooks, uh, this is like online shopping. You can hit different categories and narrow down your results to exactly what you're looking for. Uh, you can limit by the publication date. So if you have a scientific or technological topic that's evolving, you may just want to find sources that were published in the last couple of years. You can limit your results based on year. Uh, you can also click different source types. So maybe your teacher says that you have to use at least one magazine, at least one newspaper article, at least one journal. Uh, whatever your teacher's expectations are for the types of sources you use, you can narrow your results down based on source type. You can also narrow down your results based on subject and a number of other different categories, if you will. Um, so source types here, right? again, you can select those. The subject limiter is the one that I am always finding is most helpful. Now, in this one, I start scrolling through and I see Jordan Michael, American basketball player, donations. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. I want to know what kind of donations he's made, what kind of charitable giving he's done in his life. So I check that box. And you could check multiple boxes and then hit update. That's fine. But this subject seems to hit right on what I'm looking for. And it only has 36 results, uh, which is excellent. Actually, it came up with 43. Um, but that's so much more manageable than looking through 700,000 sources. Now, if this is a search, and that was kind of complicated, right? A little time consuming. If this is a search that you want to save, then you can go up into the right hand corner and all databases have something like this where you hit share and then there's a permalink that pops up you can copy and paste that permalink into a document or into an email to yourself and you click that link and it'll bring you right back to this search. Again, as we learned in a past lesson, the URL at the very top of the page is not going to bring you right back here necessarily, but the permalink that you've opened up here in this drop down menu will. So that's why the permalink is so important. Now, I open up the source here. You may, in the left-hand corner, have to click, click, see full text or see PDF or something like that to actually open up the document. And when you open it up, here it is. I've got a source that it seems like I can use. Again, there should be a permalink that you can get that will bring you right back to this very specific document. Permalinks, again, are really important. That's why I keep bringing you back to them in these lessons. Now, what actions can you take? You should be able to identify articles that may be useful to you and save those permalinks so you can come back to them easily later. Now, flip through or skim what you find to see if it looks useful now but don't start reading closely and taking notes just yet. There's still one more thing we need to talk about before you start that. We have to create a source citation for the article. Now, as always, consult your assignment schedule or check with your teacher to determine exactly what is expected of you next. But as we keep going on our path towards a great research paper, I'll give you another method for finding an article and we'll talk about how to cite an article.